Hello and welcome to the Dinosaur for week 32, another seven curious interesting things I saw last week. Let's crack on. Uh, the first one is from the University of Zurich uh, and a team has um, extended some research that happened in 2019 uh, where they interpolated video. So this is called Time Lens which is event based video frame interpolation uh, which basically the short version is it can make up the frames in between frames of video. So if you shot a 28 frames per uh, second video it can upscale it to 310, 53 becomes 906 frames per second. So as you can see on the right hand side, um, it's super, super smooth. So this is this is pretty much doing software versions of what hardware used to do. So uh, slow motion cameras can now actually be helped through software. Um, so this is great. Um, so if you work in the video industry, this might be kind of curious. If you have some old footage, for instance, that you want to make look cinematic and awesome, then this can do it for you as well. Um, there you go, very interesting, saw that. Um, Apple have released uh, quite a controversial feature. Uh, it's controversial in several ways, but also brilliant in many others as well. So um, this is in keeping with Apple at the moment. Um, so what is this? This is a, a system uh, that they have announced uh, that will be in iOS 15 that will spot and flag uh, inappropriate child abuse images. So how does this do this? It works in iMessage and iPhoto. Uh, it's all on device, um, the actual analysis. So if you have a photo that uh, arrives on your device or you're trying to send from your device, i.e. it's in your um, photos or it arrives through iMessage, then it will look at every photo. It will then hash it, so it will it will essentially encrypt it um, in a way that it will actually identify what's in it, encrypt it, send that into the iCloud, um, where it will um, compare it to known images of child abuse. So uh, if your hashed version matches their hashed version, i.e. it's not the same, the image isn't getting uh, sent along, it's the it's the sort of encrypted um, fingerprint, shall we say, of the image, um, then um, they have the right to um, do a, or several things, which is one is they will flag it, saying, um, you know, we've noticed this thing, uh, secondly is they will block it, we're not going to show the thing, and thirdly they will report it or could report it to um, law enforcement. So that's an interesting feature. Uh, if you are below 13 and are part of a family account for instance, uh, this is optional, but uh, it can be flagged to your parents uh, if you are looking or sending these images, and if you are between 13 and 17 it won't do this. So. Um, now, the reason I said it was controversial is there's quite a lot of backlash against this because if you start looking at photos on your phone that are of a certain way and reporting them, uh, then that's just the thin end of the wedge really for anti-privacy or somebody to hack that or what else comes next, um, those sorts of things. They're basically what's on your phone should be on your phone, but clearly in this case, um, you know, child abuse images, whatever you do is is wrong. So uh, there's, there's an interesting um, argument going on there. Um, lots of big companies are against this and have come out um, publicly against this, signed a, a big letter for instance. Um, and it's also it's quite interesting that what if you are young and going through gender reassignment surgery for instance and you are documenting your progress on your phone, these probably will get flagged. So um, that's kind of interesting. So it's not, it, it's not as simple as it sounds, however uh, we'll see what happens to this one. Just announced this week uh, and it's using a thing called Neural Hash which is sort of machine learning. So um, look out for that, uh, that's interesting. Um, uh, as we sometimes say, on a lighter note, uh, the Playdate console. So this is a funky one-bit console, so it's black and white. It's not even backlit, uh, but it does have a, uh, a low reflective screen, so you can kind of, if you're gonna play it at night, then you just need your, uh, a candle next to you, I guess. Um, but why is this interesting? Well, it's interesting for several reasons. It has a crank, uh, which is an input device not really seen before, unless you talk about sort of Nintendo Wii and those sorts of things, um, but this has a crank. Uh, the games themselves are super lo-fi, um, but they're really intriguing. It's like a game game designers and game developers, um, basically Christmas, this thing. Um, it has lots of things, it has Wi-Fi, uh, it's open source as well, so you can actually uh, make your own games for it as well. Um, but the really cool thing about this one is they release the games 
uh, as a season. So you'll get them once a week for, I can't remember how long, it's something like you'll get 20 games in a season of games. So they will all drop on, say, a Saturday. Uh, everybody gets it at the same time. Everybody can play the game at the same time. So it's creating this really interesting uh, moment every week that everybody will talk about, everybody will play. So it's not like you can come to a game a little bit late and everybody will get it on the Saturday. So it's a, re a really, really interesting Totally sold out for 2021. They made 20,000 of them available. Totally sold out. Um, but uh, if you do order it now, that you will get it in 2022. Uh, I've just had a look. It's about £150 just for the base unit. If you want the case with it, um, it's a little bit more. Um, but once you've added your taxes and uh, your uh, shipping, uh, then it, it turns into sort of £180, something like that. So um, $250, I think it turns out to. However, Super, super cool. Um, I may well be convincing myself to get one of these things because it's just uh, a lovely device. There you go. Um, so this is Scilab, um, who are Carnegie Mellon University. It's their sort of security uh, division um, or research lab. And um, they have a really interesting, they've shown a few things over the years of how they take their cybersecurity data. Say somebody's doing a denial of service attack on your servers. How do you spot that? Obviously there's an increase in traffic, but is it from a certain IP? Is it towards a certain device? Is it um, from a certain machine? Um, so what they've done is they've done these interesting visualizations, which look like kind of little, almost like fireworks of sort of nodes with lots of stuff come, coming out of them that you can kind of pick up just by looking at these visualizations where you're being attacked from. Um, so what they've also figured out is actually you can turn it into music. Uh, and if you passively listen to this music, the way the music changes can be picked up by essentially novices because they can tell the music is changing. They go, hmm, that's different. The, the tempo has changed and the, the notation has changed. So um, so what they've done is they've done a demo and what you're seeing in front of you right now is actually me doing a visualization of Pi being turned into Baroque style music. And if you listen to it, you can actually tell how it works and when it sort of changes in, in its sort of intensity. Um, so that, I thought that was really interesting about uh, how can you um, sort of interrogate data in a very interesting way that makes it accessible to most other people. Uh, there you go, have a look at that. That's kind of cool. Um, again, this is uh, almost from the fun to the, um, the sinister again. So this is uh, somebody uh, in Ohio who um, basically violated a restraining order through changing the names on a Napster play uh, playlist. So you might be thinking, isn't Napster dead? It's not that Napster. Yes, it is the same logo and everything, but it's not really that Napster. Uh, it's, it's Rhapsody, which is a music streaming service. So it's a music streaming service. Um, so there was a, um, a couple that had shared playlists. They had shared access to the logins. Um, and um, the, um, the man was not allowed to contact the woman. And uh, so what he did is he uh, went into the shared playlist and started changing the names of the playlist to, you know, I've always loved you, uh, can't we work this out, etc. So harassing through playlist names that well, were obviously then um, being accessed by his, I think, ex-wife or soon to be. Um, so I thought this was really, really interesting because then obviously he was then hauled in front of court again and done with violating the, 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 the terms. Um, and as I've researched this, this is also something that happens, and there are campaigners against this in Spotify as well. So um, if you are, you can be stalked through people sharing playlists with you uh, on Spotify as well. So it's a really unexpected side effect of shared accounts or playlists or public things that can be named um, and follow people around. So um, the reason I thought this was interesting is just, uh, ah, didn't really think of that. Then if I was a product manager doing things like this for a living, then I might need to think about this because it's an unexpected um, effect. Um, Fortnite uh, is doing these things again. So uh, you might have noticed Marshmallow before. Uh, first of all came to fame for these sorts of events. So this is a big event in Fortnite. Um, this is Ariana Grande. So she's the latest. Um, as of recording this, it's the last day that you could see this live in Fortnite. Um, so this is a video uh, of it. Um, what is it? It is a series of, a, I think, five nights. So they're, they're just running the same thing five times. So I think from the 6th to the 8th of August. Um, and what you do is you log into your Fortnite um, account and then there's a big thing on the homepage and you just wait around until the time. It's, it's basically like a, um, a, a pay-per-view, I guess, but you don't pay. You just turn up. So uh, there's a big animation, then you go on this magical journey. There are in-game quests to do. Uh, it's only a 10-minute experience. Um, the songs aren't new so they're not releasing anything um, fantastically new. There are some songs in there that are more like Fortnite than they are actually like Ariana Grande because they're not hers. So it's a little bit of a confusing affair. Um, 
However, uh, if you're an Ariana Grande fan, she's not touring right now, so this is probably a cool thing to do, uh, although you've missed it, probably, if you're watching this and you've just heard about it. Um, so that said, um, you know, there's there's some, again, if you read the reviews of it, a lack of a narrative. It just seems like it's a thing rather than a, okay, can we do something new now? I want something more from these. So this is the third or fourth time we've seen these now. Um, and it's kind of cool, but it's like, what next? So um, there you go. If you're an Ariana Grande fan, go and check that out. And finally, um, Facebook, uh, as I've said here, you know, just when you thought they couldn't be any more dystopian, uh, this is their research department. Clearly, they're doing quite a lot on VR at the moment and have been for a while. They've got all sorts of studios bubbling away. Um, so this is them trying to solve the problem of when you're wearing a VR headset, uh, you are locked off from the outside world and everybody thinks, well, okay, they're, they're looking at screens on the inside. So this puts two LED screens on the outside. It tracks your eyes um, inside the goggles and projects them onto the outside. Outside. So uh, it does a little bit of kind of funky stuff so it can tell whether somebody's looking at you from an angle and puts all the kind of the, the side bits on it and things like that. Um, but other than that, uh, this is obviously supposed to um, try and create some sort of connection with the outside viewers, uh, which you may well be seeing, by the way, because you might have cameras in the VR goggles looking at the outside with an augmented view on it and this is projecting your eyes on the outside. So I uh, just thought I'd end with that. Uh, there are people out there who are trying this sort of thing. So um, um, yeah, nothing more to say about that, but that's curious and that's interesting. There you go. Um, with that, we are done. Hopefully that was useful. Hopefully it was interesting. I'll see you next week.